Okay, hello Janis, we are live now. Yes. Good to okay. have you here. Hi. Janis, uh, you know Yeah, you know that we are uh, at the end of our corporate learning uh, 2025 Mukaton. We have still two or three weeks to go and we plan to develop a, a blueprint for corporate learning in the digital age. And many participants uh, from uh, human resource, from learning and development participate at the MOOC, have shown interest to participate because they want to learn what a MOOC is, how it works and what are the challenges and so on. Uh, you have run a very interesting workshop a few weeks ago in, in Madrid, the fifth European MOOC State Stakeholder Summit. And uh, you have agreed to share a little bit uh, to us our, your experience about the future of MOOCs, MOOCs in the, the business world. So thank you very much for joining us. But first of all, could you uh, say a little bit more about yourself, about your professional background, about your background in, in, in the learning arena, so that we have a clear view of what you are, who yes, you are? So, um, I've, I'm working in the organizational environment for the last uh, 25 years, and I have been in different kinds of positions. Mainly it was marketing and marketing communication, uh, training and learning, uh, uh, and also organizational development. Uh, when I say uh, training and learning, I just need to say that I'm not an HR person, so I'm a marketing guy in terms of profession, but my background is organizational development from the Gestalt point of view, Gestalt psychology, and how this is applied to uh, the organizational world. So, and um, um, actually very, it was it was something around seven years back when the MOOC was the MOOC hype was already getting into the game and the MOOCs were uh, 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 taking place into the educational environment um, when I discovered them. And I was really, really very much intrigued with by finding myself learning in a new way. And uh, this really, I was just to tell you the story, I was coming back from work at around nine o'clock in the evening and I was playing a little bit with my boys and then I was going after that, my, after my boys went to bed, I was going to my computer and I was mooking like crazy. So and I discovered this beautiful world that uh, I was learning in a new way. And um, then I thought, how can I bring this to my projects inside the organization that I was working for at the time? And that's how it started. And back in 2012, I think uh, Fresenius Cabi, the company that I'm working, probably it was the first company that we had even a mini MOOC. That was uh, very early, 2012. Yeah, we, we started working yeah. on that in 2012 and we released okay. it end of 2013. And uh, um, it was about uh, a, a product knowledge, let's say, uh, uh, courses. And um, it was incredibly successful and then we continued um, this process for uh, some years after. And um, and then this was how um, a model for MOOCs and e-learning has been uh, developed. Uh, I have developed that. It's from an instructional designer point of view. And uh, um, very recently, um, we have a publication on this model. And this publication is in, uh, I can show you the book. So the book is called Beyond Storytelling. And um, it's published uh, by Springer. So if people can just go and click mm -hmm. beyond, uh, Google Beyond Storytelling Springer, they will go directly to the book. My, it, it, we are a lot of co-authors there, and my uh, uh, contribution, my chapter there, is about e-learning with impact. How to use narrative structures and storytelling in corporate learning. So this is one part of my work, which is reflected today in this publication. And the other thing was in this, uh, uh, as I was in uh, uh, working in different kinds of marketing and learning settings, I was conducting and facilitating different kinds of workshops. Mainly it was corporate strategy, and then I jumped also to uh, uh, workshops with uh, different innovative ideas. And that's how, uh, and then I also started doing this outside of the company. I had this opportunity, and I was very much then specifically pointed and directed to MOOCs. 
So that's how we came up to this Madrid uh, uh, workshop that you mentioned in the beginning, which we probably elaborate more on uh, the continuum mm -hmm, of our mm -hmm, discussion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, interesting. Uh, it's it's not so easy to think about the future to to identify future trends and maybe your your method was a, a good help uh, how have you facilitated the workshop can you say a little bit more uh, how the method is working uh, is it a game or is it a something else what 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 happened yeah you're right i mean predicting the future is a quite a tricky and uh, and unpredictable process yeah. And I remember Sir Arthur Clarke, I think this was the guy who predicted uh, the, the, the uh, existence of internet back in 1964. It was a BBC uh, uh, broadcast. And he said something which is very interesting regarding uh, your question about the future. He said, um, people who are dealing with predicting the future, uh, they, they, they move towards two directions. One is if they use, for example, um, uh, issues and uh, ideas of today, probably in 15, 20, 30 years, they will be heavily ridiculed by the people at the time that they will evaluate their ideas. And then the other pillar is that they will be so innovative in their brainstorming and they will come up with totally crazy things today mm -hmm. that they will be ridiculed today. So I start my workshops with the people that they come and I say, you have a choice. When we are talking about predicting the future of MOOCs, you may be ridiculed today, you may be ridiculed in something like 20 years. So, um, what I work mainly in these workshops is the art of disruption, as I say. Disruption has a negative quotation, notation. Sometimes, in our... yeah. Not always, yeah. but sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in our entrepreneurial and corporate world, we have used it in a positive way when we combine it with innovation, mm -hmm. okay? Um, um, but uh, reality shows that most of the times maybe the outcome is not so uh, innovative. Uh, the way I use it is uh, I have a theory, which is that we are living in a world of heavy dis disruption. So if you want really to move on forward with the future of, of, for example, of MOOCs, the future of education, the future of anything, the future of your company, uh, you need to be familiar a lot with disruption and how it works. And actually, I believe that you need to experience destruction. And that's what I'm doing in my workshop. I have a process where the people that they are participating, in order to co-define the future of MOOCs, they experience disruption first in this safe environment that I create there. So, for example, uh, I ask them to do some exercises, taking off the hat of being experts in education or in MOOCs, and putting some other heads that they are more safe to, you know, to work with. Like they can be uh, building constructors, they can be uh, mobile designers, they can be whatever. And you know, they play safe in a context that it is a little bit away from mm -hmm. their everyday business. Because if you go there, people get biased, and they are not so much innovative in their brainstorming. And it's you know, it's a two days process, and we work on that. And finally, we come to. Uh, um, uh, to a context where we use a game or I also use art. And in the mm, workshop that I uh, facilitated and I created in Madrid, in the MOOC Summit, I used a specific game uh, where uh, I used the, the art of disruption. This game has to do with combining the trends that are existing at the moment in the MOOC uh, era. Uh, the systems, I call it uh, 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 system elements, what it is related to MOOCs today in terms of who is paying the cost, who is providing the MOOCs, uh, what are the hot topics uh, around the MOOC uh, um, uh, today, um, um, technology, so all these kind of... Uh, so a map around elements. MOOCs, elements around MOOCs, okay. Mm -hmm. the system, and with some very specific disruptive interventions. And uh, um, in the game, people just come with a combination of these two different elements, the disruptive intervention and the MOOC uh, uh, topics and issues and elements. And it's quite interesting because, you know, sometimes it may pop up something like uh, people, uh, they are working on, on for example, um, the reinvention of assessments. This is something that we can think in our, when we have some panels and we have some discussions and some presentations and conferences, it's easy to come up with such uh, an action. 
uh, or for example how could we reinvent the role of a tutor or how can we uh, reinvent the cost coverage of MOOCs but with this game um, you may come up with some combination that it sounds quite bizarre today for example replacement of the tutors in MOOCs uh, or for example um, we also came up with replacement of the learners mm -hmm. so it's science fiction mm -hmm. the point is that by working on these topics people really come with creative ideas that they connect to the present mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what we do at the end of this workshop is that we come up with some homework and we say regarding the outcome of this workshop what is the first thing that you can do tomorrow in your workplace in order, in order either to change things if this is desired according to the outcome of the workshop either to keep things and prevent things as they are if this is also desired because what we came up it would be probably a crazy idea mm -hmm. what i like very much in, in in your game is that you look at a, a specific element uh, of MOOCs and then you have a choice when i understood you right uh, to go in a certain direction to see what would happen if this element uh, got a strong boom or what would yeah. happen if this element crashed or reimagine uh, the element uh, exactly what exactly if, uh, do you decide which uh, action is taken to the element or does this uh, the participants of the uh, of the workshop do have no, the choice to say, okay, I have an element and now I want to think how to boom it, how to crash it. Uh, actually, it's a game. So the first part starts with throwing the dice. Okay. Ah, okay. Throw the dice, the specific element of the MOOCs and the specific intervention card are coming together. And then the people have the choice and they brainstorm together in groups, depending groups of three, in groups of six, it depends how many participants they are in order to see what is this what does this mean first of all and then to go on with def different solutions in the future ah, okay. so it's a combination of, of 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 luck and chance and also a combination of uh, brainstorming but they definitely get triggered but some from something they get triggered they get pushed sense. okay by throwing a dice okay okay yeah. okay and you have sent me from the, the workshop a newsletter uh, the MOOC Raptor from May 2030. Uh, so I got a newsletter from you from the future. Very interesting. By the way, do you have also the, the NASDAQ list from 2030? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 20, but 2020 is enough. It's okay also for me. Yeah. Will you provide it to me? Do you have it? <laughs> <laughs> we are all looking at this kind of information. Huh? I mean. uh, and it's very interesting to to go through the, the newsletter, and it's based, I think, on the results uh, of your your workshop in in, in Madrid. And uh, one topic was how to reinvent traditional MOOCs. Can you explore a little bit more about this topic? Yeah, I mean, just to connect it with what I said before. Yeah. So there was one card as a system yeah. element, which was yeah. traditional MOOCs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there was an, a card of disruption intervention, which was uh, um, reinvent. You said, I think. It's reinvent. Yeah. yeah. Reinvent. So, yeah. so this was came up by chance by throwing the dice, and then the group had to work on this topic. So, okay. how do we reinvent, and what do we believe would be a reinvention of the traditional MOOCs? And then the people came up with with different ideas, specifically this particular, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, choice. Uh, the ideas that they came, they are more or less very much focused on the present. Yeah, so they yeah. have not been so much innovative. Of course, yeah, you but see it's, that they say, hmm. yeah. So, so I decided uh, that the, the linear MOOC format will have an end and yeah. that uh, MOOCs will be more centered around storytelling and uh, right. animation about scenario based content, fl yeah, this flexibility. Is we have already started working today. I mean, storytelling, I just showed you the book. So storytelling is, is a main part of my work with uh, e-learnings and, and MOOCs. And uh, uh, I use a lot working with stories. It's not only storytelling, but mm -hmm. working with the stories in the organization. So, and, and, and then, of course, these people, they come up with different kinds of ideas. And at the end, what they are addressed to do, I'm asking them, please 
put all this kind of outcome you have in a big, big wall yeah. in terms of probability and intensity. What you came up with, how probable is it to happen in the next 15, 20 years? And what would be the intensity of this uh, mm -hmm. prediction of the future that you made? Mm -hmm. So this is also interesting. So mm -hmm. there is a, a whole process on that. So that's what the consultants uh, typically do, huh? to make two dimensions and then there is one element or one field which is very important. The element, yeah. in your case, it's high intensity and high probability. Yeah, it's probability acts and intensity. So people, yeah. they can yeah. put it in low probability, high probability, and, and then we find at the end what is high probability and high intensity. And this is where I focus the newsletter that I, I created. Okay. It's a creative way to uh, to give to the participants the outcome of the uh, of the workshop. So it's like, as you said, the newsletter which is published in 2030. Yeah, yeah. And there are some very astonishing uh, results which should have a high probability. So uh, uh, the role of the tutor uh, I've read uh, yeah. will change. Huh? said we were not one tutor but many tutors and then people came up with the idea of chatbots chatbots as, as tutors and pedagogical consultants and it's a final end I, I read that chatbots will uh, become learners on MOOCs I mean yeah? we are imagining a society it looks like science fiction where artificial intelligence and robots would be parts of the society and the people came probably robots will, will definitely learn by MOOCs and uh, also we came up with the idea of what the robots will learn in the MOOC. And we say, yeah. yes, we learn about humans. They learn about humans. As now we learn about artificial intelligence and robots. Robots will learn about humans. So we created also a list of, uh, um, of potential MOOCs, uh, MOOC topics in mm -hmm. the era of 2030. Mm -hmm. So it's funny. What was the most, for you, uh, what was the most interesting result of the workshop? Um, the first thing, because I'm, I'm, I'm a process guy, I'm very much focused on the process. The first thing is how people, they really get in, an, in, in a flow, in an excitement, working with this topic. So this is one thing. And how they come up with sometimes really very innovative ideas about the future of MOOCs or whatever future we, we examine, because I do this with also with other uh, systems and elements. So this is the one thing. Um, let me think what was also so um, are there any if, if I identified any opportunities we have not cashed in in the moment which could be of interest in the near future this is actually the uh, the goal of the of the of the workshop using the game because as i say by bringing the chance factor throwing the dice and having is this uh, disruptive interventions um you definitely come up with you know, at least a topic to work with, which probably you haven't discussed or you haven't even thought before. So, and this is the great opportunity that you may come up with some ideas that we don't usually uh, see them or, 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 or they are brought in conferences or in discussions uh -huh. or we do now in a webinar uh, in the era of uh, learning and development or uh, anything, any other uh, area that uh, people uh -huh. are, uh -huh. learning are involved. So I think this is this is one important uh, aspect. I've read in, in the newsletter that you have discussed about assessments, uh, yeah. what uh, the responsibilities of learners are, uh, different kinds uh, of way to assess, and will be an assessment uh, at least an important topic in the future. Uh, instructional designer was a, was a topic. Who yes, is the instructional designer? Uh, the collaboration. Theme of was course. a topic, uh, how people enroll, how people to peer-to-peer -peer learning, uh, pedagogy was a, was a, a topic. So many yeah. many things people thought about. How long was the workshop? An hour, two hour? No, no, no. no. Uh, you didn't need more that <laughs> time. Was, huh? It was a full day. Yeah. Uh, and I usually propose one and a, one and a half day or two days, but also we can swing depending on the participants. What it is interesting for me and important is that what I ask, for example, when I offer these workshops, I ask that we split it in two days. So the first day, half of a day, people are working in this safe environment that I create in the beginning. And for me, it is important that the, the, the participants, after the first day work, as we say in psychology work, they sleep on that. It is important that they sleep on what they have worked the first day. And then the next day, 
they are working in a more risky environment, which is the environment of education, so and the MOOC environment. Um, you, you mentioned the assessments, for example, or you mentioned uh, uh, um, different kinds of combinations. I remember one thing, it was a, a group that they were working on uh, um, um, uh, on the peer-to-peer. -peer. So mm -hmm. they came with a combination, the boom of peer-to-peer. -peer. So peer-to-peer -peer would be optim optimum, optimum, optimal. And um, they came up with the idea that probably uh, there will be group identities as uh, uh, part of a MOOC. For example, two, three, four, five people, they enroll together as a unity, which means that they get all together just one certification. And then for the employer, it will be very important to hire all two, three, or five in order to successfully fulfill a project. Mm -hmm. And it sounds crazy, but it was interesting that this came up with this uh, 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 workshop process. So different kind of ideas which really intrigues, uh, uh, how can I say, a further processing for uh, more ideas to come up with. Mm -hmm. What do you plan now to do with all the results? You have done the workshop in, in Madrid and you have some participants, but I think there's much more outside uh, in the world people, what people are thinking about. Uh, any ideas how to, to, to collect this information, how to combine this information? Uh, yeah. What are the next steps? I mean, I had also this workshop uh, in Online Educa last December in yeah. Berlin. Um, now my next workshop is in uh, Itzem in, uh, in Naples in uh, September 2017. Um, uh, quite a disruptive title, Digital Universities in the MOOC era. Okay. So this is the topic that you see already the title of this sentence is already disruptive. We are defining universities as digital. I mean, can you imagine se seven centuries ago, you know, did we said Typography universities. No, it was typography, a very disruptive intervention at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's 700 years after that we are becoming digital. So um, this is very interesting, you know, as a mm -hmm. thing to, to, to think about. Um, but will it be I published think? somewhere or what, what do you plan about to do with this, all these results? I have a dream. So the yeah. dream is that the more workshops I do, I collect all these collective knowledge and prediction of future of these experts, that they are all experts in, in this area that they are participate. And uh, yeah, to, to make something like uh, an atlas, you know, a publication of how in 2017, we imagine the future of MOOCs in the next 20 years or 15 years, something like this. How have we imagined at that time? And uh, um, th this is my dream. I, I, I need for sure much more uh, content in order to do that, but I'm working on that as you have seen now. Okay, we can also ask the participants of the Corporate Learning 2025 20, MOOC to give some insights or inputs what they think what the future is. Yeah, and that would be very interesting. And that maybe you can, can come to the Corporate Learning Camp in, in autumn and we can also use uh, some elements of your, your, your game, uh, throwing dice and discuss about the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do the workshop there. I yeah. don't know. I mean, it will be an experiment if I can do it with a lot of people. Up to now, the participants more or less are limited to 20 to 30 because uh, um, I'm very much uh, interested and I really care that all the participants have a voice in my workshop, so I limit it to a, a specific number, but it would be an interesting experiment in a camp to do it with, you know. Let's see know. whether we can do it. Yeah. Okay. How many people do you expect in the camp? Several hundreds, but we can also break up oh. in, in groups. <laughs> we can also we will break up in groups like, it's a bar camp and uh, we can do this in smaller groups, no okay. problem. Oh, no I, problem. I will think of something like five or six co-facilitators. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good. Uh, last question from my side. Um, storytelling uh, is an interesting topic, but what does beyond storytelling mean? What you, mm -hmm. Your book is titled Beyond Storytelling. What does beyond mean? What, what, what is beyond? What is beyond? We, yeah, we have first uh, to learn what storytelling is and not what is beyond storytelling. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, storytelling is, is a buzzword already, and especially yeah. now it's entering in a different way, uh, in different ways, the organizational world. Um, I mean, along with a lot of other people, we created this network, which we call Beyond Storytelling Network. And uh, um, we have already two uh, initiatives that they have been already executed. One is the book, 
And the second thing is a conference that uh, um, it took place in Heidelberg in May. And um, the way we see storytelling is beyond storytelling is working with stories. It's the place where you work with stories in order to make a meaning. Mm -hmm. It's not about storytelling. It's about also story listening, harvesting stories from the different corners of the organizations, uh, what to do with stories, remanufacturing them. And uh, for me, for example, if I take my, my, uh, my case as working with stories in the e-learning environment, what I do is that uh, I use stories in order to collect and harvest the informal learning which takes place in different corners of the organization and formalize it in an e-learning in a MOOC and so on, which makes it uh, available and profitable for the whole organization. Because informal learning is great and it takes place in, in, a, in a specific order and the actors at that time, they take profit of that. What I do is that I, would, I capture this and I just uh, uh, make it common and uh, spread it in the whole organization. So working with stories is something that it's beyond storytelling. It's a space, as I say, where the stories that you, 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 you share in an organization, they make a meaning. You do something with them in order to make a meaning for the whole organization. And in this book that we published, mm -hmm. we take all the range of the different organizational aspects. Some people, they work with storytelling in leadership. Some other people, they write there about storytelling in cross-cultural work. Some other storytelling and change. This is very important. So this is the whole story about storytelling and beyond storytelling. Okay. So, Janis, thank you very much for this talk. Uh, very interesting. I have also have a look at your, your book, Beyond Storytelling. What I find very interesting is that you started uh, with explaining that you have very early a MOOC in your company around products, because uh, up to now, I never thought that a, a product uh, qualification or a product training could be done with MOOCs, because it's very structured and people should really know uh, what the product is and how to use the product. It was for me up to now more in the, the classical e-learning. For me, MOOCing was more a creative part, bringing inputs, uh, but maybe it is also relevant for people who are working in the sales and so how, how to, what to do with this product and how to uh, advertise this product, how to convince uh, mm. the customer for the product. Uh, that's interesting that it could yeah. be also play a role in, in the more structured uh, part of this, the learning world. That's my well, that I, Just as the last word, what I describe also in the, in the book is that product knowledge is not only what it is existing in a brochure yeah. or in a, in a manual. The product knowledge is in the people that they deal with this product from the, the beginning, the yeah. manufacturing place, uh, the sales people and the customers as well. And that's where the story work comes in. So when you take the stories and you bring them in a nice format like videos, or like animations and so on, in your MOOC, then things change about how we, ex we experience and how we know product knowledge learning. Yeah, and also the, the specialists who normally work far away, the product manager who work far away from the reality, really get insights what people could do. So, yeah. Okay, so, so Janis, thank you very much. Thank and you, Have thank a nice afternoon, yeah. Okay. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank bye. you.